Hello from the Amy here in Dallas, where we are excited to show a number of fantastic demos for our manufacturing clients. One of the things that we are demonstrating you today is carbon twinning, which helps our clients to project and estimate the carbon load of their lines and operations with high accuracy. This is really important because measurement of your GHG footprint uh, at uh, high fidelity with good spatial and temporary resolution is really hard to do and it's expensive. So what we're doing instead is we're using telemetry that is easy to get on your line that you probably already have in place like pressures, uh, solenoid states, flow rates and temperatures to create using machine learning a carbon model of your operations that we then can use on a go forward basis to estimate the carbon footprint based on that readily available telemetry. Let me show you how it works. Here we have our facility, we have our line, and what I can do here, I have this array which is chemically uh, measuring the carbon emissions uh, of, this, of this line here. And we're measuring CO2 and methane uh, on this line. Uh, and then what we'll do is generally on a large scale, we have literally 50, 60 of these arrays we put around in the facility for a period of maybe two or three weeks, and we're constantly monitoring your emissions in that facility and then correlating it to the real-time telemetry. So what I'm having here is I have a, a a representation of this line here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually vent some stuff and you'll see uh, this reflected here uh, very soon in the telemetry. Uh, I'm going to just start uh, essentially increasing my uh, my CO2 emissions a little bit uh, on this uh, on this line here. Let's do that. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit larger for a moment. You hear the CO2 flowing now. Uh, I can feel it here and, and these sensors are picking this up while we're getting telemetry from our pressures and flow rates here. I'm going to uh, switch off the CO2 uh, and uh, I'm going to vent some butane, which is very, um, very um, similar in, in nature to methane, and our sensors are picking that up. It smells really bad. Be glad you're not here yet. So I want to let that one for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to switch that off now. Woo wee! Uh, and uh, going back here to my operational dashboard, you can see these, uh, these flows reflected. Uh, here's my flow that came out of the CO2 that I switched on. Uh, here's our methane flow. You see the pressures, the temperatures. They go around with, with all these flows that we've done. Now I switch over here to this um, uh, to this sensor array. This is where we're actually measuring the actual emissions coming off that equipment for that time. Uh, and you see the spikes here in uh, in, in, in methane. Uh, you see the spikes in CO2 uh, corresponding to decreasing in temperature and the displacement of O2. Now we take all of this information correlated with the operational telemetry we're getting, and we're building this carbon twin that allows us to do this on a go-forward basis after we remove these uh, these arrays, so you don't have to actually pay for them uh, on a long-term basis. And how this looks like uh, in, in real life then is something like this, where we have or on here, the installation tower that's uh, been heated by a fire heater for which we've created a carbon model just like that. And so what we can see uh, from, a, from a television perspective, uh, here are all the variables that influence uh, our carbon twin. And one of the things that you see here is the thermal resistance of this heater uh, is increasing quite a bit probably due to the fact that the fuel uh, is being used, has some pollutants in there uh, that uh, create truth on the heat exchanger, uh, therefore create increase in the thermal resistance. Uh, and our carbon twin can tell us exactly how that increase in thermal resistance actually impacts our carbon equivalent emissions on that fired heater uh, and also forecasts what our emissions are going to look like if we continue to operate that way. And at the same time, we can now pinpoint exactly in the process where our emissions are occurring, where they are increasing, and we can derive a number of actionable recommendations that help our plant operators uh, to uh, mitigate uh, those emissions and to put into context the cost of the mitigation to the uh, to the common impact that they are creating. With that. So carbon trade a fantastic way for you to understand and model the emissions footprint of your process, of your line, of your facility. Uh, on an ongoing uh, basis, uh, every uh, every single time, every single moment of the day, without having to invest uh, in, in a lot of large-scale, expensive uh, infrastructure to actually try to measure it in C2. Now we are still using uh, measurement technologies to validate our carbon twin uh, periodically. Uh, we might uh, we might either you know use satellites in open facilities every three months to come and do an, uh, a controlled measurement and then relate that back to the results that we get from the carbon twin to see how accurate our model is. Or indoors, we might bring back our, our sensor arrays uh, for a couple of days uh, to, again, do that validation of the model. Uh, but it's a fantastic way to get a good handle on your carbon footprint uh, and achieve your ESG goals.